Yeah. Follow through. Oh. Yes, that's a follow through. Oh. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Grey Man Operations. Today we're going to be doing my course review of the Bravo Tactical Africa Dynamic Movement course. Now those of you who know my channel and have seen my course reviews, you pretty much know how this goes. I'm not going to tell you how the things were taught because that is property of the instructor and should be taught by an instructor, but I am going to tell you and show you what we learned and if you do uh, want to see what one of these courses is about please you please stick around because i'm going to show you a ton of course footage so let's not waste any time let's get into it the very first thing that jc lamprecht the main guy at bravo tactical africa does on his courses is gets everyone in a group and wants to know why they are there I really like this way of doing it and it is a departure from what I usually see at courses where the instructor tells you why you should be there. JC basically asks people one by one, it goes through the entire class uh, to explain the reason for being there. And what I really appreciate is that on every person's reason, he is able to A, validate their reason and validate why they should be there and how this course is going to help them improve for their own personal reasoning and their own personal reason for being there. That for me speaks volumes and it speaks to a person who understands his craft and his trade and understands how to teach it to people. From there, it's just a very small, very quick run through of your normal safety rules and we fire a couple of shots just to get the warm up. This is an intermediate level course so you do have to come into it kind of knowing what you're doing. If you're still very skittish about your firearm and you don't know how to run a reload and things like that, this is a course that you might want to just do after you do a beginner course because there's a lot of movement and there's a lot of weapons handling and safety is very very important after the warm-up we get into the movement aspect of it and the very first thing we are taught is that all important moving off the x now i really have to commend jc for the way he teaches he goes into the most minute detail if you didn't know how to move if you'd never moved before for example and you came on this course I feel like JC would be able to explain how to move to you in a way you'd understand. He really drills down into minutia, things as small as how to point your toes and the importance of pointing your toes. Another thing I like is JC demos everything he teaches. And that really gives you confidence that it can be done and also gives you a visual reference for how it should be done as per this instructor. Gun, you're going to start to open up, step across, catch your waist, extend from wall sides, break the shot, follow through, recover, search and assess, and holster. So you interpret it the way that the instructor is demoing it. So moving off the X is effectively going from point A to point B, um, a step away, just effectively not being where you are. Now all of these things are done multiple times. You will do it so many times that you don't need to think about doing it. And you'll also do it whilst firing different uh, courses of fire. Sometimes one shots, two shots, two shots in a reload, four shots, that sort of thing. So that you become very comfortable with the movement. The next thing we were taught is the left and right pivot. Now the reason you want to pivot is to give yourself the best shooting platform to return fire. If you're wearing a plate carrier, you want your plate facing your enemy. If you are bladed off against your enemy or if the, the round hits you at your 3 o'clock and exits your 9 o'clock, it goes through all of your vital organs virtually. So there is a lot of value to facing off against your uh, opponent to minimize your chance of taking a life ending hit and maximize your chance of delivering one. Now the next thing JC took us through was the Groucher walk. Now the Groucher walk was not something I was overly familiar with but it is quite complex and makes a lot of sense. It's effectively a way of moving to maximize your chance of landing hits and minimize your chance of tripping, falling and basically moving in an awkward manner so that your ability to run your fire on your weapon system is diminished. Pivot to the Groucher walk so we're not only now pivoting on one spot, we're now pivoting and moving and that is effectively simulating a threat coming from your left or right or any other direction besides your 12 o'clock. You're having to assess that threat, align your body and move towards or away 
from that thread whilst putting accurate rounds on target. Once we had all that down, we did what's called the fire pull drill. Another thing I'd never heard of before. You don't have the world of space simulation in your kitchen, but you want to pull the fire away from your wife, away from this innocent bystander, because as soon as I just pivot and I take the shot, guess what? Fire is going to pull fire. So that's why we call it a fire pull drill. And so what you're effectively doing is moving in a somewhat lateral direction, i.e. your feet is moving in one direction, but your body or your shots are going in a different direction. Ready? See the plate actually pass your innocent bystander. Good! You start to grouch your walk, start to present, and take your free shots. Not something I really uh, ever had the chance to, to work on, but as I said before, Jace's ability to explain the reasoning the methodology and the technique, technique behind this really gives you an extremely good baseline for what you need to do in order to maximize your chances of successfully completing the technique. We then performed some deceleration drills. Effectively, what this means is sometimes you're going to be far away and have to accelerate and then slow down and take accurate shots. This is not only controlling your footwork, but also controlling your breathing, understanding what your sights are going to do as you bring them up after you have exerted yourself or after you're quite tired. You do these drills like multiple times and it does become quite tiring. Also, it was like 30 degrees on the range. So your hands get sweaty, your heart's beating, it's hot. And um, really getting the ability to understand what your red dot's going to do or what your iron sights are going to do and how you have to absorb those inputs in order to put accurate round, rounds down range. Moving backwards and shooting is very different to moving forwards and shooting. And you really have to control those muscles and those shock absorbing muscles in such a way where you can dampen the effect it has on your sights while you're trying to pull the trigger. We then did the quite exhausting drill of entry and exit of shooting positions. Think about it like this. You have yet again somebody that you need to get to, but you don't just want to run in that direction. You first want to neutralize and then move. So same now, I need to neutralize and then I'm allowed to move. What makes it exhausting is we did it multiple times to where I think we were doing like six or seven shuttles per round. It gets really exhausting. Your heart, get, your heart starts to beat faster. Your arms get tired. You have to really learn to breathe. A lot of people, and even myself sometimes, when we take a shot, we hold our breath. Doing the intern exit of shooting positions drill, teaches you that you that when you are standing still and shooting that's your opportunity to actually catch your breath and you have to learn to do that because while you run to the next position you don't have a chance to catch your breath and then coming to the end of the day we did explosive movements now basically what this is is you start at around 22 meters and you'd have like a certain course of fire so it's explosive movements and alternating cadence so for example it'll be four shots at 22 and then you're gonna run to the 15 do three shots and then run to seven and do two and then you do like three shots at 22 and run to the 15 and do four shots and then at seven you do one so you're learning how to move quite aggressively but you're also learning how to control your cadence once you've arrived at your second location so that you can get accurate shots on target we were using c-zone steel at distances of seven 15 and 22 meters at the end of the course we had a coin challenge now before i get to the coin challenge which is a, a source of great pain for me something that jc mentioned in the course is that us as everyday carriers and and armed civilians and prepared civilians we have to take a more leadership role we have to be the example because we have the skills and the tools to get involved now it's a departure from what most people teach most people say run away and they leave it to someone else live to fight another day kind of thing and it's something that must be used with reverence. But I did really appreciate that there's someone who's saying, listen, we are in a country that needs examples. We need people who are going to step up. Because if everyone's just going to run away, it's eventually going to come full circle and come back to us. So with, with maturity and with responsibility, we have to ensure that if anyone's going to go first, it's going to be us. And so we got to the coin challenge. The coin challenge is basically a performance on demand drill. You fire three shots on season steel from 25 meters, two from 15 and one from seven. And I got, we tossed the coin to see who gets to choose the order. I got to choose the order. And in keeping with the, with the, the mantra of the, the course, which is be the example, I said, look, I'll go first. I'll be the example. Here's my coin challenge.
Oh. 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 Nicely done. Unload and make safe. So as you can see, to my everlasting disgrace, I missed at the 15. This is made even more painful for me by the fact that I was the fastest on the day. But um, is what it is, right? It's a performance on demand drill. So, and someone did actually win the drill, so well done to that winner who, who won the coin challenge uh, on the day. And I do also want to say there was a young lady on the course, which is, this is the second course of Bravo Tactical Africa, where we have a young lady. The guys, this woman drove from George to Cape Town. It's a four hour drive to do a course. I don't want to be hearing guys saying, uh, this range is 45 minutes away from me, it's too far. Okay, this woman drove four hours from George to Cape Town to come and do a Bravo Tactical Africa course. If you're living with like near shooting range and there's a course happening, you really have no excuse. I also want to say a big thanks to Bjorn who represented our Patreon community on the course. Excellent guy, super humble, came to work, came ready to go and did an amazing job, a very, very good example of what I would like our Patreon community to become. To my patrons, I have some good news. Next weekend, I'm giving away a Nightcore BB23 backpack, and I will be giving away another Nightcore BB23 backpack. So I'm giving away three Nightcore BB23 backpacks, as well as a Holosun 407K uh, for April. So if you aren't a patron, if you're watching on YouTube, it's the first link down below. If you're watching on Facebook, Instagram, it is the first comment. I want to say a massive thank you to JC for allowing me on this course and to film it. I also have to say a big thank you to Michelle, who basically gets the shots. Like all the B-roll footage you saw in this video was achieved, was gotten by Michelle. She's the camera lady who makes a lot of these videos possible. So a massive thank you to her. She's on the range running up and down with us in 30 degree heat and also having to point and shoot something, but she doesn't get the break in between. So, and she does an exceptional job guys that's it i hope you enjoyed this video i'll probably see you in the week for my birthday video as you know my birthday this is my birthday month if you follow my channel my birthday is 12th of april um and that means multiple patreon giveaways and even if you won something last week you'll automatically be eligible for this for the prize again immediately so you don't skip any prizes on patreon uh for the month of april so that is it guys have a good week be safe train hard cheers god bless